Hi, I'm Walt Fritz. I'm the director of the Foundations and Myofascial Release Seminars. And I'm here at Oakworks today because I wanted to share a technique with you that is probably my favorite cervical and thoracic technique. And I use it every day, all day. Um, the beauty of, by the way, we're using an Oakworks convertible, Prolux convertible, which allows you to use your regular tabletop with the power base. And I just love the power base um, to treat, especially for a technique like this, because I tend to like to work a little higher. You notice my stool's down as low as it goes. It allows me to really get in here close. If you're using a regular treatment table, it can certainly work out fine if you can get your stool low enough. So the base, this is a basic technique that's taught, taught in a fair amount of myofascial release coursework, where I come in, I lift my patient up, and with the heels of my hand, I get in under the occipital ridge here. Now, in and of itself, this is a dynamite technique, great for um, suboccipital tightness, mid and upper cervical tightness, as well as headaches, a lot of other conditions. And Molly, what do you feel right now? Uh, just a little pressure. Just a little pressure, a little bit of stretch. Mm -hmm. It's fairly comfortable? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this should be a fairly comfortable stretch for most people. Now, you'll notice that I have my forearms almost perpendicular. If I'm like this, with my arms out, go ahead and relax a little bit, you tend to have a little bit too much flexion going on in the neck where I'm just pushing her head forward, okay? Not a lot of traction. But if I can get that lift like that, we get a lot more traction through the cervical and upper thoracic spine. Now, there's many times where this is the only technique I use and I get some great results, but over the years I've adapted this technique. I've adapted it in a way that allows me to both do more assessment as well as treatment of the upper thoracic and entire cervical spine as well as the upper two or three ribs on both sides as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep her in this position and I'm going to ask you to lift up just a little bit. She's going to help me a little bit. I'm going to get her straps out of the way and with the ulnar borders of the heels of my hand, I'm down quite low. I'm pressing down into her first, second, and even third ribs here. Now, if you can see, instead of being in that flex position that we started with, she's in a good degree of extension. Molly, does it feel like you're having to hold yourself up, or is this relatively comfortable? Not at all. Very it's comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, it should, they should feel very fully supported so they can relax. Now, this is done, as, as I said before, both assessment as well as treatment. The assessment piece of it is I'm going to allow her a little bit of a glide and I'm going to slowly allow her through my hands, working my way up through the upper thoracic, lower to middle to upper cervical. Now, as I'm allowing her to pass, I'm paying attention to both sides of the spine, both sides of the transverse processes as well as the musculature. I'm looking for areas of density, of tightness, of possibly vertebral rotation. I'm also asking my patient if there's any areas that feel uncomfortable to her. You feel that spot right there? On, yeah. the, on the right. On the right, yeah. yep. And all I feel is a little bit more density, like the, the spine is rotated to the right in that direction. And finally, we slowly allow her to glide all the way back up to our starting point, And notice we've gone from extension once more to flexion. So while I was talking, I also picked up a spot on the left side of the first or second thoracic rib T1 area. So what I'm going to do is, Molly, can you pick up again? I'm going to come under your strap so I can get at that a little bit easier. And again, take a look at my hand position. The ulnar borders of the heels of my hand are bearing most of the weight here. I've got my hands in a V position. My forearms are almost vertical. Now, right there, do you feel that spot? Yes. Yeah. What do you feel? Uh, a little pain. A little pressure. pain. Okay. Is that familiar at all? Yes. So, if at all possible, you want to be able to connect your findings with their symptoms or with their issues, and there we did, right there. I found something, upper thoracic on the left-hand side, that's a familiar pain to Molly. So, instead of allowing her to glide, I'm just going to hold her in this position. I'm both pressing up toward the ceiling in a sense, resisting her, as well as a little bit down toward her feet, although there's not a lot of force. Does it feel like I'm pushing or too hard or anything? No. Nope. It's a very gentle technique. And under these lights, we're sliding a little quickly here. Um, normally, I would be using liquid chalk on my hands, which really works well if there's a lot of perspiration. You can feel yourself sliding through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. 
Um, and this technique may require us to do multiple passes. So if I, if I start gliding past a spot, I may need to lift her up again and come back in for another pass. Let me have your head. Mm -hmm. And relax, soften, give me the whole weight of your head, neck, and shoulders. That's it. And finally, we're going to work our way back down to the suboccipital region. I could easily spend 15 minutes in all the different variations on this technique. And this, as I mentioned before, not only is one of my favorites, but one of my patient's favorite techniques as well. Mm -hmm. I'll slowly let you down. And I would typically follow with a little bit of traction or wherever else we need to go with that technique. Well, thanks for spending time with me. Um, if you want some more information about any of the techniques I've shown or my seminars, you can refer to my website, www.foundationsandmfr.com. Mm -hmm.